वेलकम बैक डेटा लीडर्स टू इनसाइट बिल्डर चैनल वी आर डिस्कसिंग ऑन सुपर चार्जिंग अतीना विथ ए डब्ल्यू एस रैंकर इन द लास्ट वीडियो दैट इफ यू आर फॉलोड ऑल द वीडियो टिल नाउ द लास्ट वीडियो वी आर डिस्कसिंग ऑन क्रिएटिंग अ डेटा पाइपलाइन वेर वी टेक टू टेक्स पाइप्स क्रिएट टू टेबल्स ऑन ग्लू कैटलॉग एंड क्वेरी दैन जॉइन दीज टू टेबल्स इन अतीना एंड देन राइट द रिजल्ट टू एस डी पकेट दिस इज वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इन दिस वीडियो and how are we going to do that we are not going to use the aws glue console or athena at all we are just going to use jupiter notebook if you are surprised then probably you are not gone through the rest of the series you have uh, searched in the internet and come to this video directly if that is the case i have uh, linked the playlist of all the rest of the videos of this uh, group of uh, Uh, discussion that i am having on aws wrangler kindly go through the playlist uh, it will explain the entire process of establishing the session giving the basics of big data and uh, how glue catalog athena or uh, interlinked all these aspects will be covered in detail do go through that right now i am going to directly jump into the jupiter notebook server the jupiter notebook server that you will uh, you will have to look at will be like this it will contain these two folders aws documents and jupiter books inside jupiter books you will find athena underscore glue uh, related file ipmd file click that and that will open the athena underscore glue through aws wrangler dot ipmd notebook once you open this notebook this first file cells all the notebooks in this repo will have this uh, first five cells just execute that it will create session in your aws account with your aws secret and and uh, key uh, ensure that your access key and aws uh, secret is active mine is active so it's not be a problem and next is an important uh, point that i want to highlight again S3 service in AWS is a common ocean of hard disk. You heard me right; it's a very big cluster of hard disk, and uh, it it is kind of Hadoop cluster. They have their own their own uh, specific uh, file system called EMR FS for a EMR cluster also. But the idea of having a very big cluster, very big cluster of hard disks, and in that hard disk, couple of space. in in the case of free tier you are given a 5 gb of space to put your data and work with that that space whatever folder name or whatever bucket name you are giving will always conflict if with other users also because it is in a common space and if you are going to use the same bucket name it will conflict with uh, other user like me i have used destination folder bucket name and if you use it same it will conflict why think about it i am going to execute this uh, execute this particular uh, cell so the the path destination folder is assigned to destination bucket now this is my s3 bucket so if you uh, this is something i we have to clearly understand so i will go to s3 bucket and i will show that in my list of s3 buckets the destination folder s3 bucket will be listed if it is not my bucket assume that destination folder bucket is not my bucket and it is your bucket it is in your account and so you see that it is it is here now for a moment assume that it is not my bucket it is in your account i am going to use that bucket name and i am going to use my credentials to read to list the objects what do you think it will happen it is wrong basically i cannot read what is there in your buckets or in your account it is wrong so i am using my my credential session to read your bucket it becomes a problem again in the same way if i am going to give a same bucket name if you give the same bucket name in your folder in your account also it will conflict again so when aws uh, aws session is created like this from outside for an example from uh, from the internet i am sitting somewhere in india and i am trying to connect to some server in ohio and if there are two buckets which is of same name and two different sessions are trying to connect with it obviously the system will get confused 
so they have completely removed this concept and they have made ensured that if you give the same bucket name it will immediately error out it will say that this bucket is already getting used so you cannot use it again i am explaining this uh, again and again because uh, this error can happen for you I, it has been happening for me in couple of uh, cases so uh, that is why i am giving you a full uh, back, background of what will happen if the same bucket name is used let us proceed with the listing of objects in my case i have already written the data to the uh, to the bucket in my the source folder we have seen the destination bucket now we have to look at the source folder we have the source folder here the earners underscore jet dot csv and earners top underscore earners underscore lit dot csv so these two files we are going to uh, make it as data frame and then write it so we, the next cells will do that so we are going to read it as data frame here we are reading it as data frame and uh, then next we are going to write it to glue catalog if you go back to the uh, uh, the presentation so the text files have been read as pandas data frame and we are going to write it to glue catalog going back to my jupyter notebook i have to first of all list what are the databases in my account you will see there are four databases and i am going to create a database named learning db you see this learning db is already there here but if i still execute it the command will execute because i am giving the flag execute exist dot underscore ok equal to true once i give this the aws wrangler will not throw any error in case if you say false then it will throw an error keep that in mind now i'm going to continue if i uh, check uh, i am not going to check it right now let me show it to you later i am going to write the pandas data frame as blue catalog tables i have done that now i am going to write it and i have done that and now i list the uh, destination buckets and all my data would have already gotten already written to the destination bucket it will take a moment and you will see that it is already written and here you will be wondering what is happening why there are two times the same thing has been written because as i was executing i had faced some errors and i had continued the entire uh, tutorial again because of this it is it is actually writing twice in order to avoid such problems you should always you should always clean the bucket never keep the uh, keep the old data there or else it will create a lot of headache so if such a issue happens in your uh, uh, what is it called in your uh, exercise kindly use delete objects and remove the uh, files so if i do like this wr.s3.delete objects it will delete and then if you list it there will be nothing now you have to go back again to the top and you write the files again so you are writing it write the data frames again and this time once it is written do not use this command delete objects and now you come and list it here you will see that i have only one file there is no two files in the location earners location has one file jets has one file if you continue without using this delete objects you will face the problem when you are going to query it from athena so let me uh, you will see that in in couple of minutes i had faced that problem also face the challenge if there are multiple files under earners folder what will happen is athena will query all the files as single data so you will have multiple rows in your uh, in your uh, query result we, you will you will face these kinds of uh, you know mistakes and you will learn step by step however i i am just giving you a heads up what what will happen if you do this mistake before we go into uh, starting querying with athena let us go to glue and see what is happening there in the web console we have not come here till now so we are going to go to glue and see what is going on there and we will see there will be a database we already saw that uh, there is a database called learning db you see that learning db is there you click that and under learning db there are two tables so the tables are created now in athena if you are going to use it from the web console the query that you need to give for uh, getting the data from top earners table is this select star from 
learning underscore db dot top earners and limit 10. So this is the basic query you need to provide. However, we are not going to use the web console. So jump back to Jupyter Notebook. Athena is a separate module in AWS Wrangler. In Athena, we can describe the tables. That is the first step you have to do. You have to describe the tables. Describing the table means to understand what is there in the table. What are the columns? What are the column types, etc. will come out right now as data frame. So it is, this is a data frame. If you want to use it for other purposes in your Jupyter Notebook, you can go ahead and use it. This is a proper object. After that, we can actually run the query that you saw in Athena here. You can run the query in Jupyter Notebook and this will come out as a data frame. The same data frame you wrote in, now you can query it back out. This looks very simple for a very small data set that we are working upon. Once you practice it more and more and then move on to a very big data set, at that time you will exactly know what is going to happen. That is the entire objective of creating such a very simple process of pipelines. The idea is not to uh, you know, complicate something and try to learn from that. Idea is to make it simple, learn it and then go step by step and step by step above for complicated tasks. Now, I have actually executed this query. Assume that I want to find out what and all queries I have executed till now. Because as I told you in Athena, queries charge. It is chargeable. So I want to know how many queries I have executed till now. I have executed till now 113 queries. And I want to know the result of the last query. That can be found out by using the query execution ID. So I take this query execution ID and I use get query results uh, method here. I come here and paste the ID. Remove this uh, older ID and if I execute it, you will see that I get the same result that I got here. It will take a moment. And again, this is again a separate, this is not going to be a separate uh, query written to Athena. You, you understand the purpose of using the uh, query execution ID. You don't need to query Athena again. You can just use the query execution ID and you can get the same data back. The same data you got here, you are getting it here also. But this time it has not, you can see that here. If you, if you go back and check the number of executions I have done, it will check that. And if you see, the list is still 113. It has not increased to 114, but still I got the result. This particular command you will be using very often. So keep this in mind. Do not query Athena again and again. It is going to charge you money. Okay. Now coming to the next important point. That is to create, uh, to understand how the tables are created inside Athena and Blue Catalog. I told you this is all big data tables, right? So how can I prove that to you? It is very simple. Now I come and update show create table. There is a method called show underscore create underscore table. You execute that. If you execute that, you will get the entire command that is used for creating the jets table. The table that you see here, if you click this and if you come here and if you see edit schema, uh, wait a minute, sorry, I made a mistake. You come here and you say, edit table I, uh, yeah edit table that is the right word so you see all these formats all this uh, third day properties the columns the keys the entire data is populated to you here you can see the uh, the input format is text input format hadoop style text input format output format is hadoop style hyql and the location is jets the same folder that you have given at the top that is how we can ensure that our data is written as big data. Show create table method is understood. Next, what we are going to do is the important point. We are going to join the tables. First thing, we are going to join the table and get the result as a data frame. Okay. Just execute this uh, cell. We are joining the table. If you are aware of SQL uh, querying, you know that we are querying from two tables, their jets and top earners, and we are joining it on JID. The execution has completed. Just execute this join DF and you see that 
I have got the joint table, ID, email, salary, occupation, and the personal jet information also, and the distance covered by the jet. Uh, if you go up, if you see that the personal, yeah, the distance covered and personal jet is in Ernest underscore jet. Name, email, ID, salary is in other, another table called top earners list. Now the table has joined. But our objective is different, right? Our objective is to write the result to S3 bucket. Uh, it's not just to write it as a pandas data frame. The solution for that is there is a command called unload. If you run this unload and if you execute the same command, but you are going to unload it to unload location, just execute this command, you will see that the result gets unloaded to that particular area. So it gets unloaded. And if you want to go and check the location, unload location, just click execute this cell, you will see that there is more than one. The data is already unloaded here. But you might be wondering, okay, there is manifest.csv, there is metadata, but what is this additional data? What is this additional file that I'm seeing? This is the file of parquet format. In order to read this parquet format, just copy this file name and just paste it here. You see, I am pasting it in the new cell, the cell, this cell, I am pasting this file name, this file name that you are getting. This will be different for you. It will not be same. It will be completely different for you. You can see this is, this is the year. Uh, this is the year, this is the uh, uh, month, this is the date and rest of the things are based on the time and stamp and various other uh, other parameters are included in this file name for reference. You are going to take this file and you are going to read it as parquet. Okay, I am using, I am telling you this to prove that the data, the join data has been written as a into the S3 bucket. So once you read this, you will see the join table that is written into S3 bucket comes out. Till now, we have completed our objective. We have started by taking the text file, written it to blue catalog as tables, queried it using Athena and the query results we have written to S3 bucket. That is all done completely through Jupyter Notebooks. If you go back to the we go back to the Athena, uh, okay, let us go back to S3 buckets and you'll see that there is a separate folder that has been created under destination folder. For you, it will be again, as I explained to you, the bucket name will be different for you. So open a different, uh, yeah, open the bucket that you have taken it as destination bucket and click that. Inside that you will find all the all the uh, folders that we create a join table unload location so click on unload location you will see that the file so this file if you are still uh, if you still want to check whether the file is exactly what i am ta talking about you can click on that file come here on object actions and say query with s3 select you click this point and it will actually do the query you can do the query and you can run the sql query what will happen is it will show what is there inside the query. Okay, why it is failing? As I told you, the file is not CSV. It is Apache Parquet. So you have to select Apache Parquet file. Okay, and now the output is going to be CSV format and then I run the SQL query. Now you will see that successfully return four records. As you can see that the entire pipeline has successfully completed. There is more to AWS Wrangler and there is more to Athena and Glue. There is a lot of interaction that is happening between various services in AWS. Once you look at the entire ecosystem, as we have seen in this 10 videos, the playlist I will be sharing. The, the playlist will be right now coming in front of your screen. Just click on the playlist. You will see the other videos that I have made to explain the entire ecosystem till, uh, till you know you come to this kind of a pipeline. Execute those code by yourself and master each and every step. And after that, you will be able to take on much more complicated activities. Data leadership comes with lots of practice and you are data leader. With that, I wish you all the best and 
Stay tuned for further videos. This is not going to be the end of it. But this is one of the uh, major endpoint where we can write clear data pipelines. We will start, we will further meet with uh, data modeling as well as uh, trying to work with uh, more complex pipelines like writing to database and reading from the database that is not linked with Blue Catalog. So stay tuned for such videos and uh, with that all the best for your future uh, opportunities and see you then. Have a nice time.